Hi everyone, welcome to Suturing. So I'm going to start off with showing you how to hold your instruments. And then I'm going to show you how to do the throws of the suture. And after that I'll show you how to place an actual suture. So first of all, here are your instruments. You have your needle holders. And these are hinged instruments. So anytime you have a hinged instrument, you're going to hold them with your thumb and your fourth finger. On the other side, you can use your index finger as kind of like a brace against the, the shaft of the instrument, and that'll give you some stability and strength as you're actually passing a needle through um, skin or whatever tissue that you're suturing. So this is how you're going to hold your needle holders. Your thumb forceps, you're going to hold like a pencil, like this. Um, try not to overhand it. You don't want to do that. You might pinch too strongly and damage and hurt the, and harm the tissue. You don't want to do that. Um, if you hold it like a pencil, you can be more gentle. And then also, you can also brace your hand against the patient or table or whatever you need to uh, when you're suturing. So that way you can keep your hand steady as you're trying to pick up whatever tissue that you're suturing. So, um, so when you hold it as a pencil like this, it gives you the most flexibility and control. So this is how you're going to hold your, your instruments. So now I'm going to show you how to do the throws. You don't need your, uh, your thumb forceps. You're going to put those down. Um, you'll need your needle holders in your dominant hand. And with your non-dominant hand, you'll pick up the suture closest to you. So for me, that's the, the maroon suture. So what we're going to do first is um, you're going to start with your needle holders above your incision or whatever you're suturing. So I call this the inside. So this is where you want to keep your needle holders in the inside. The first throw, so you're always going to do four throws for a proper knot and that depends on the type of suture you're using. Most sutures uh, require four knots um, to be a proper knot. So we're going to do four. Um, so you're going to hold your needle holders above your incision. You're going to wrap your maroon suture over and around the needle holders like that. And then with your needle holders, you're going to come over here and pick up the white suture. So you might need to give a little bit of slack on the maroon one in order to do that. So and keep your hands like this because now what we're going to do is you're going to have your put your hands, uh, move your hands opposite each other. So the, my hand holding the maroon suture is going to move away from me and the hand holding the white suture is going to move towards me. So they're going to go like this and it's going to pull the suture accordingly. There. And what you want is a nice flat knot like this. That means that you pulled with proper tension. Um, you want to pull um, in the same, like very close to your incision. You don't want to be up like a V. Um, so you want it close to the incision like this. What you don't want to see is a slip knot like this. That means um, one was one suture was pulled um, differently than the other one. It wasn't e they weren't pulled equally together. And so a slip knot is just that it's going to slip through. It's not going to hold. So you always want it to be flat like this. So pull with equal tension on both sides and parallel to your patient. Okay, so that's throw number one. Throw number two, you start off the same way. So your maroon one is always, you still hold it with your non-dominant hand. And my needle holders are going to be inside, so over the incision area. And now you're going to um, wrap your maroon suture over, um, over your needle holders. Your needle holders are going to come down here and pick up the end of the white suture. And same thing. We're going to pull our hands opposite. So the hand holding the maroon suture is going to move towards me. My hand holding the white one is going to move away from me. So like this, so opposite. Then it's going to pull, pull your suture. So you see how that knot looks right now? That's how a proper square knot should look. So you don't want any extra loops in there. Okay, so there's throw number two. Throw number three is the same way that the first one that we did. So keep your needle holders over your incision. You're going to wrap your maroon, maroon suture around the needle holder, pick up the white suture, and then your hands are going to move opposite each other, like that. You have a nice flat knot right there. Okay, and then the last throw, this is throw number four, so the same thing. Keep your needle holders on the inside, wrap the, su the maroon suture around um, over the needle holders, come down here, pick up your white one, and then move your hands opposite directions. 
So make sure you pull with equal tension in both sutures. There we go. And I'm not going to tighten it all the way just so you can see that there's two square knots right here. But ideally, when you're actually suturing, you're going to want to tighten it every single after every single throw to make sure that it's going to stay. It's not going to slip out. And that's how you do your throws. Okay, let's start suturing. So we can go ahead and open up our suture pack. So um, this one's already open, but you open it by uh, by peeling up these these little flaps right here to expose the inner pack. Go ahead and remove that and then you're gonna have to move these flaps down to expose the needle and the suture. So you're gonna remove it with your needle holders. Remember, hold your needle holders with your thumb and your fourth finger, and you're gonna grab it with the tip of your needle holders and go ahead and remove it, um, pull it out. This one, um, I already have one open, so I'm gonna leave this one in here. But go ahead and pull yours out. Make sure you're gonna hold, here's your needle. Make sure you're gonna hold it at the back part of the needle. You don't want to um, hold in the cranial part of the needle because that's going to dull the cutting edges and make it dull as you pass the needle through the um, through the skin. And so you want to grab back here, you know, the caudal third or fourth or so towards the swagged end and you're always going to want to hold it towards the tips of the needle holders. That's going to give you the most leverage. So. Um, so hold it at a 90 degree angle like that. And you're going to need your thumb forceps. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to hold the far end of your incision with your, with your thumb forceps. You are going to add a 90 degree angle to the incision. You're going to drive your needle through. And your needle, you're going to place it about 3 millimeters or so from the edge of the incision and drive it through you can pick up, pick it up and then reposition your needle on the needle holders. You can ratchet it once if you need to help hold it, that's fine. And then pick up the end closest to you of the incision and then drive that through, again about three millimeters from the edge. And then you can push it through more if you need to and then grab it towards the middle and pull the needle all the way through. At this point you can put down your forceps and then grab your needle and your suture and you can pull it most of the way through. Now you want to make sure you still have a tail on the end because that's what you're going to create your knot with. Okay, so now we're going to do our throws. So remember you want your needle holder over your incision. So you want it in the middle in between this suture and this suture. So in the middle. And so the first throw we're always going to wrap the suture around twice. So you're going to wrap it over and around once, twice, and then now we're going to grab the end of the suture and remember you're going to pull your hands in opposite direction. So my left hand is going to go away from me, my right hand is going to go towards me. So in opposite directions. And make sure to keep your suture um, parallel to your patient. You don't want it up, pull it up like a V. You want it flat. And you just want to oppose the edges. You don't want to pull it too taut where it's the, the skin is puckering because that's going to hurt the animal, right? So we don't want that to happen. So you're just going to pull it taut so the edges, are, the edges of the incision are opposed. And then once you have that, then you can let go. And that's our first throw. So now we'll move on to throw number two. And so you keep your needle holder in the middle over your incision. Wrap your suture over and around once. With your needle holders, grab the edge of the suture. Now your hands are going to go in opposite directions. So my left hand's going to go towards me, my right hand's going to go away from me, right? And make sure your knot is flat so that way you have to pull equally on both sides of the suture. So pull, there you go, nice and tight. So that was throw number two. Throw number three, same thing, wrap around, grab the end of the suture and then pull through. And then throw number four, wrap around once, grab your suture and move your hands in opposite directions, pull through equally parallel to your patient. There we go and there's throw number four. So now we are done with our knot. So you can pull both ends up like this so you can cut both of them at the same time. There is your simple interrupted suture number one. So let's do that again. 
What we'll do this time is same thing. We're going to pick up the far edge, three millimeters from the edge, drive the needle through. We're not going to pull it through this time. We're going to go to through the other, the other side. So pick up the closer edge, drive the needle from inside out, about same distance, about three millimeters from the edge, push it through, grab your needle in the middle, pull it all the way through. You can put down your forceps, grab your needle and pull the suture through. Make sure you leave a tag so you can tie your knot, okay? Um, and so now, same thing as the last time, we're gonna tie, um, do our throw. So four throws. Keep your needle holders in the middle. So the first throw you're gonna do twice. So you're gonna wrap around once, twice, grab the edge of the suture, our hands are going to go opposite directions, pull through, pull taut just until you have opposing edges, opposing edges, and then you're done with throw number one. Throw number two, needle holder in the middle, wrap your suture around, grab the edge, pull through. Number three, wrap it around, grab your edge, pull through. And then last one, wrap around, grab your edge, pull through. So if you can see a pattern here, your hands are just going back and forth this way, tying the knot. So if you know your left hand is close to you, you know after you tie it, it needs to be on the other side and vice, and vice versa. Okay, so now we can cut the edges. You can get both of your suture and then go ahead and cut it. And there you have two simple interrupted sutures.